I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So before we started, yes, I got distracted by a fandom wiki. Which which up, fandom wiki? The Dragon Ball fandom wiki. Of course wiki. it was the Dragon Ball fandom wiki. So I've been looking at uh, Chi-Chi from Dragon Ball Z, and it reminded me of something, and that's the fact that there was a 2009 Dragon Ball movie. Was it 2009? It was 2009, Dragon Ball Evolution. She's been portrayed by Jamie Chung. Man, Brandon, uh, I really can't get over how terrible this movie looks, even today. Wait, I'm sending you the, the link. Okay, you, you knew exactly what I was looking yeah, up. Yeah, uh, it's... It hurts my head. I'm not going to lie. There, oh, yeah. It. I was going to say it d doesn't hold up, but it, it wasn't good to begin with. No. It's funny because, like, the entire cast, literally the entire cast is Asian, except Goku. <laughs> uh, that's a thing I didn't notice until you said it. Like, like all the main characters, yeah. except Goku. And it's like, why? why? Why don't you think that... Why do you think that you need to have a white guy for the main character of Dragon Ball Evolution? Yeah. I kind of want to watch it now. The hair looks so bad. On all like, of them. Awful. Well, you know what's even worse? The male leads. There's not... the Literally the only white guy in the movie is Goku. Also not built like Goku. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Piccolo was not... Piccolo was not a white man. But Piccolo is also a green man. So I don't yeah. even know or what I'm dealing with right now. He was Lord Piccolo. Oh, God. Brandon, I forgot it, but Lord Piccolo looks really, really bad in Dragon Ball. <laughs> there, I'm scrolling through the screenshots. Oh, no. He doesn't even have the antenna. It's just, like, these slits on his head. Yeah. Like, why? 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 Uh, I imagine there's a, a budget involved. Okay. All right. I'm going to look this up right now. Dragon Ball Evolution budget. I mean, nobody, nobody in the movie is known in the United States, like, a particularly... Big actor from my memory. Um, it had a budget of thirty million dollars. Holy shit! All right, with thirty mil, they could probably have uh, done some of that upright. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing that surprised me. Yeah. Its box office. Yeah. Was fifty eight point two million. They made they, money off that. They made money off of it. I mean, you have to. Okay. The level that you would have to screw up a Dragon Ball movie to not make money off of it, though. Based off the poster, though, like, I wouldn't expect that to be something that'd do well at the box office. I mean, I know I didn't see it, and I don't know anyone who saw it in theaters. Yeah, So, yeah. And that was, like, prime... Brandon, you and I were going to see a movie literally every week when yeah. this movie came out. Yeah. Like... <laughs> we were going every week, and for one to come out, when we just went, nah, hard pass. Like, that... Yes, and not only that, it's a Dragon Ball movie. Yeah. Like, I feel like our particular demographic, by law, we have to... We were in the our demographic, demographic at the time yes. that film came out. Yes. Our demographic is the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z demographic. Explicitly. Yes. Like, like I could probably go to anyone and yeah. quiz them on Dragon Ball knowledge... And they'd probably have at least a base level if they're a, a male 
nearly 30 something. Yeah. The so, best of the knowledge and then I have an opinion on Dragon Ball GT. Yes. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion. The um I will say this, I didn't really watch Dragon Ball GT. I because didn't either. I wasn't, I wasn't interested in it. Ditto. I wasn't a fan of uh I like, didn't want the chibi versions of like everyone yes. just wasn't feeling it. I didn't really want Kid Goku and I didn't want Kid Trunks. Yeah. That's pretty much that's pretty much the definition yeah. of why I didn't watch Dragon Ball GT. Yeah. <laughs> and some people fucking loved it. Some people did. They of course it's all re- irrelevant now because uh Dragon Ball Super is a thing and it like totally uh, retconned the whole series. Is it is Super good? I I heard Super's good. I didn't watch any of Super. I the only time either. I just caught up only... on um uh Boku no Hero. You were telling me. Yes. It's good. Yeah. I like it. So you're completely caught up now. No, I, I think I'm two episodes behind. Did I'm, you uh, see? I got to episode, I think, 81 and 82. Was, uh, I had to wait a week because it just aired. Okay, so I'm just going to do a weep, weep, weep. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay, Brandon, tell me the last thing that happened in Boku no Hero for you. Uh, They went into that bunker and rescued the girl who used her... Uh, quirk because she could just rewind stuff so then yep, yep. Midoriya had to just like keep destroying his body to fight the main boss so that she wouldn't like get burnt out and then that passed they're all back at school now she's under quarantine with the razor head um, yep. and, and okay, yeah, that's okay. more or less that there's the reporter came by who yep it, yep 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 that happened um, and that that's about where it left off yeah so that fight sequence is probably I'm like I'm completely caught up with the series like in manga form yeah, that's still probably the best. That's still probably the coolest fight so fight. far. It's a really cool fight sequence. Yeah, when he did all for one one hundred percent, I was like, "What the fuck is gonna happen?" And then, uh, oh yeah, her quirk. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. It was yeah. also really well animated. I, I would say not as well animated as the demon slayer scene. You know the one. Yes, I know the one. Uh, but it, it was, was pretty well animated. You know, demon slayer had some really good scenes. The nice thing about Boku no Hero. Um, even with Demon Slayers, that it didn't suffer from budget restrictions, at, like, after the first couple seasons. Yeah. Where well, there was well, a clear Boku... quality drop on some uh, series. Here, here's the thing with Boku no Hero. That series prints money right now. That's true. Like, it, that series is literally printing money. Yeah. Like, if they if they print manga pages, they're printing money, literally. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but, like, I have... So, in this household, this household that I am sitting in, there are um, at least seven Boku no Hero action figures. Oh, which ones? Uh, Midoriya. I got, I've got Midor- Midoriya. All Might. I said that wrong. Um, All Might, Bakugo, and... Uh, uh, Purple Pervy Guy. No, I don't what have What the fuck him. is that character's name? That character's name is... The one that I can uh, never remember. Oh, wow. Why can't I remember his name? I'm going to look up Class 1A, and I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> That's a safer uh, Google search than I would have done. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, it probably is. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Mineta. Ah, uh, Mineta. It. Yeah. Mineta. Um, the, the one I was trying to think of is uh, Todoroki, who's oh, literally... Todoroki, yeah. Yeah, his his character I didn't like starting out, but I've liked him more and more. Now this is a fucking <laughs> fucking hero fan cast, but whatever. <laughs> Listen, that's how all of them start as a t- just a completely different topic. Well, I technically have a Toru uh, Hagaru- Hagakure, which is the uh, invisible girl, because anyone can have an invisible girl. That, figure. You should get all your uh, Pokemon hero figures like on a display with those little like hex stands with the things that go in the back like they have for Gundam and just yeah. put a blank one and just just, just tell people that's her <laughs> just one of those her, empty stands her whole characterization is wild mm-hmm. the um I find it funny cause like there, I'm looking at the scene and she's a bit embarrassed cause she took off her gloves and her shoes 
And it's like, listen. <laughs> so you're fully invisible. <laughs> you're fully invisible. Like, you could practically lose yourself. Yeah. You're going to smack my face. What? <laughs> I didn't send you nothing. Oh, is that the other picture of the cat? It takes, I don't have good service, so it takes a while if I send cat pictures for other people to get them. <laughs> oh god what minute what are we at we're at 10 minutes all right i think i think it's fine to start this week's episode we so oh let me cut you off i got my uh sleep apnea uh machine i showed you the, the, the contract yes i saw it it's a 14 foot long contract you measured it uh no that's about how wide like comparing it on the floor to where the walls are i was like that's about 14 feet long <laughs> That's horrifying, Brandon. It was ridiculous. Uh, it works well. It's a good thing. It's got a little app on the phone. And it, it, yeah. Not Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Cell network. Cell network. My sleep apnea machine has, uh, like, I forget what kind of service, but literally this is a cell network to go and update your app. So I get to sleep mm. like a, a Bane or some kind of jet fighter. It works well. I didn't snore. You, can s- I, you didn't snore. No, I did so. I woke up. I went to bed at eleven and woke up at four thirty on my own, no alarms, just because I was okay. actually well rested. Which oh. is, uh, yeah, interesting. And I only had three point five events per hour. Uh, oh, which is it down tracks from, it. Yeah, which is down from uh, over forty. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's typically a a good thing. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? It's got like light sensors and shit. Uh, yeah, heated humidifier and like temperature control and all like it's, it's all it's all fancy, it's all fancy. All the instructional videos, uh, elderly folk. Yeah, that's fair. It has heated humidifier. Yeah, and uh, and oh. I can get a heated uh, tube for it, so everything will come in at whatever temperature I want it. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. And it's got like a full auto ramp soak setting, so like um, it just I don't ha- I don't set it to a pressure and leave it. It monitors yeah. everything, and it can tell when you enter REM sleep, and it automatically adjusts the pressure and everything for everything. That's that's kind of great. Yeah, it's sick, and it has charts, and I love tracking charts. So yeah, that's actually really cool. Yeah, who produce? Let, let, who produces your your sleep apnea thing? Not a sponsor. Uh, not not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Uh, it's an Air Ten. Okay. Uh, I think a ResMed. Gotcha. Oh, man. I want to sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, this is a podcast where for 10 minutes we talk about nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing related to the podcast, I should say. Because those are all somethings. They're Dragon all somethings. Ball is very, Dragon Ball is very much a something. Being able to sleep at night is very much a something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh usually we talk about cryptids. Yes. And I'm John. I'm Brandon. Uh in this week's episode, yes, was a little difficult because it was originally supposed to be the one to go. <laughs> uh so sorry to our patrons who have Figured out that they can be co- they can use collectivism to get what they want, <laughs> um, but I was unable to finish the Wendigo episode because it turns out the Wendigo is far more complicated than I gave it credit for. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, the same thing with Skinwalkers, where that you get very deep very fast, and it's not what you think it's going to be when you go in. Yes, yes. Uh, like, I'm not gonna lie. I have hit. I, I have basically written like five thesis statements for the Wendigo yeah. story, and every time I write one, I have to like erase it and start again because there's just so many different interpretations of that story. And mm-hmm. like, we can talk about it from a symbolic point of view where it's symbolism for certain family structures and things like that. We can talk about it from a a uh, practical point of view. We can talk about it from so many points of view. And I legitimately got overloaded because there were so many that I didn't know which way I wanted to attack it. No, I, I mean, so, there's worse problems to have. It could be there's nothing, not too oh, much no. of something. There's a lot. 
a lot, lot, lot. Not so much like physical sightings, but there's a lot, lot, lot of like mythological context. Yeah. There's. I'm kind of excited to see what you're doing now. Uh, let, let me also say that every week for the last 62 episodes, every time you do an episode, in the back of my head, I'm like, please don't let it be the thing that I have already written for next one. I hope that this isn't the one you've already written. Uh, anywho, I tried to do the chupacabra next, and it turns out chupacabra is also very complicated. So we're doing in we're doing in uh something that was cited in 1973. Uh not mine. All right, dope. Uh, its taxonomy is humanoid. Okay. And its region is Mississippi. Now, guess first, and then I'll give you a hint, and then we can move on. All right. Uh, I like alliteration a lot, so I'm going to guess you're doing Mississippi Mud Man. Don't even know if that's a thing. Sounds like it should I, be. I don't think that's a thing. Mm, okay. Made it up. So, one sec. I'm, I'm listening to how to pronounce this. Just give me a second. You Emma to, saying dot com. It's it's you're looking up how to pronounce it. Yes, I'm looking up how to pronounce it because I don't want I don't want to have a repeat of uh, Texar whatever again. Texarkana. Yeah, I don't want to repeat that again. So this week's episode. Yes. Is the and I already forgot how to say it. <laughs> you just had it open. I did. Pascagoula. The Pascagoula alien abduction. Is that a place? Pascagoula. Pascagoula, Pascagoula Mississippi. How do you spell that? Open up the folder. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair. It's P A S C A G O U L A. Pascagoula. So, um. Wait, plural. What? Pl- plural? Uh, continue. It's not- it's I was reading. I was reading the the uh, the copy title. Oh, that's different. Oh, okay. So, so the, that's that's the name of it on the Cryptids Wiki and how I found out about it. Gotcha. All right. Um. Okay. So, cut to you know 1973, all that stuff. Um, I think this is about in line for the time for Guardians of the Galaxy two. So, is maybe it? I, I think I think Ego came down. Wait, let me see. Guardians, Galaxy 2, Ego. Um, let's see. Kurt Russell was Ego, as you remember. I Did don't, you see Guardians okay. of the Galaxy 2? Uh, is that the one? Yes. That's the one with, where, where, uh, where Peter where, Quill meets it, his It's father. where Santa Claus is. He's the god of that one planet. And then Late Star-Lord. 1970s. Right, Kurt Russell played the Santa Claus in the, that new movie. Did he play the Santa Claus? He was like the hot Santa. The hot Santa? On Netflix? Brandon. What? You did the, from last year, they put out the new Santa Claus movie where there's Kurt Russell. Just Google Kurt Russell Santa. Wait. And let me know wait. if that's the guy from this other movie that you're talking about. What? Kurt Russell. I just typed in Jert Russell. Uh, Kurt Russell Santa. This is important. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Whole, what? Why is Kurt Russell a Santa Claus? It was a legit good movie. Christmas so that's Chronicles. the same guy that played Ego from Guardians 2, right? Yes. All right. Yes. So I was going to make a joke about how this is basically Ego because it's in the 70s and all that stuff, but whatever. Um. So in 1973, Pascagoula, I think that's the correct way to pronounce it, Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, basically... Pascagoula is a town that is exists at the River Delta, where the Pascagoula River meets the Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico. Wow. Cannot speak. Um, based on the Wikipedia article, because I did really rough research on this one, <laughs> uh, it appears that the main industry of Pascagoula is shipbuilding, which is actually really important to the story. Um, okay. There is a median income of roughly 35 k and in the 70s, the city had a population of 27,000, which is surprisingly close to the modern number of roughly 22,000. So not a lot of population drain in What Pascagoula. happened to those other 5,000? Uh, well, Hurricane Katrina happened. Uh, okay. So that's less funny of an answer than I was hoping for. No, it wasn't funny. 
It wasn't a funny answer. <laughs> I don't think they all died in Hurricane Katrina, but they probably moved. Uh, that probably didn't help moving. Like no. people moving away. Well, I mean, it if probably they were shipbuilding, maybe it wasn't that hard to. Well, it kind of is, though, Brandon. The median income was 35K. In the 70s or in the 2000s? Now. Uh, yeah, maybe. Like, that's minimum wage. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um. Anywho, so Pascagoula is known for... Po- it's pop... Ugh. Words? I don't know what's happening to John. John just woke up. John did just wake up. John woke up from a nightmare. So that's 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 where John's living. John woke up from a nightmare, opened his eyes, looked around, and said, "It's still happening." Pretty much. Yeah. It was it was a very realistic nightmare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except for the part where I painted the walls with like this white paint that bubbled down and like started. What your nightmares are so much cooler than my nightmares. I only have one that I remember from years ago, and it, it, it involved a very. It was a giant squirrel that was uh, trying to get me. My my nightmares are just really abstract. Yeah, they're very. Um, what's the name of it? That that uh, uh what's the like melty clock? Why can't I remember? The you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Me- melty clock. My the, melty the, clock. The, the uh... melty clock man. The guy who who paints the melty clocks. Yeah, that guy. What's his face? Oh, Salvador uh, Dali. Yeah, yeah. My, I've got some some Dali esque nightmares. Don't worry about it. There's actually there's probably a lot to worry about, but that's 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 what I pay my therapist for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Pascagoula is known popular for little little else than the abduction of Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker in October of 1973, and that is going to be the main focus of this week's episode. Not really a cryptid, but there are entities that appear. Ooh, all right. Let's get into this it. This is actually, actually, this is, okay. So this is one of those weird ones where all the articles I read about it at first. Yeah. We're talking about how this is the most documented, most researched alien abduction ever. Right? Is that true? That was all I could find for like a day was people oh, talking just... about how it's the most. That's it's like, it's, funny. It's like one of those things where every single, every single like article referenced the previous one, right? And they were all saying the same thing. Like I couldn't even find. I found like a snippet of the original article, but I couldn't find the fo- the finish of it. Like I found the 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 lead, like the yeah. front page lead on it, but I couldn't find the actual conclusion to the article. No matter how hard I looked. <laughs> well, there's fun and then, just circular referencing things that don't actually give you any information pretty much eventually i just found the mufon page on it so i just used oh, okay. that yeah so so what you're going to be hearing is mostly from a uh, from a credulous source um because mufon seems to be fairly on board with this all happening so i mean if henry zabrowski is in on it yeah that that, that pretty much means that you can't it, trust it, it must be credulous no no oh yeah credulous I was about to say, I'm like, credible that you said credulous, which is the correct answer. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Charles Hickson, aged 42, and Calvin Parker, aged 18, were employees at the F.B. Walker & Sons shipyard. On the night of October 11th, 1973, the two had decided to go fishing after work. After striking out at the old grain elevator, listen, the very first article literally calls out the old grain elevator... Okay. Because apparently it must be a thing that people in the area knew. They relocated to south of the East River Bridge on the Pascagoula River. Shortly after arriving at the second site, the two began to hear a zipping noise and saw a blue glow illuminate the area. A UFO became visible with a globular top and a flat bottom and two large blue lights at the front. Sketches of the craft look very much like a stereotypical flying saucer or in some cases, like an eyeball. Those oh, are the, those, okay. That's like the two things you get. It's either like the 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 stereotypical like flat bottom hat, almost like yeah. it's like safari hat look, or um, eyeball look. It's weird, but whatever. Um, ooh, burped. This craft then touched down in front of the men as three entities floated out of the craft. 
these creatures are fairly unique in the taxonomy of aliens. Rather than conforming to a specific standard, such as the Nords, Reptilians, or the Ubiquitous Greys, which are typically associated with alien abduction stories, if you're not familiar with alien abduction stories, I don't know if our podcast is the best primer for alien abduction stories. No, not really. Did we do no. one? Did we? Did we? Did we? Did we? Did we do one? I, Brandon, we've done sixty-three was of these the things. Enfield, was that this the is, Enfield? Um, alien? Oh. No, that wasn't really. That was an abduction. What is this number? This is 64, right? This is 62. Is it 62? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's 62. Trunko is 61. Uh, I, I mean, we did cover Indrid Cold, which is kind of close. We covered Mothman, which is not too, too close. Indrid Cold's pretty close. Indrid Cold's pretty close. Not Brazilian Cigars. That, that's not it. No, that was like the... Um, that was Cow Bester. I'm, I'm just looking through yeah. the thing. Um... We're pretty we're pretty light on aliens. Uh, yeah. Oh, we did do the Wanaku UFO sighting. Oh thing. yeah. Oh, but I that did wasn't that. An, that wasn't an abduction. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. That wasn't an abduction. That was um. That was what you call it. That was like uh, a mess. It was like a, a flap. It was a yeah. Flap. Yeah. So this is our first actual abduction case, I think. I think so. Also, if anyone has the. Uh... Access to the copies. Open up the Wanaku one. I think I put that one. I had a whole like map pins and like a whole order of events and a whole like yeah. I think I think a we bunch did of stuff on that one. I think that one in the mud monster. We did a lot of stuff. Yeah. That yes. Yeah. We those, those were pretty two, interactive those on the two copies. We went pretty interactive on. Yeah. But it turns out that's not a sustainable model. So we didn't keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as as so time any, permits. Yeah, it's an as time permits model. Especially in the case of the Murphy Bear Mud Monster, where I like literally had to like work backwards from the descriptions to figure out where they were. Yeah, that was that was rough. Anywho, so shortly after arriving at the second site, the two began to hear. Oh, I already read that. Your your cursor threw me off, Brandon. Oh, okay. Your cursor threw me off. Uh, this craft then touched down in front of the men as three entities floated out of the craft. Um, these creatures are fairly unique in the taxonomy of aliens, as I said before, rather than conforming, rather than conforming to a strict standard, such as the Nords, Reptilians, or Greys, these aliens were wrinkled and gray, standing at five feet tall. Each was missing a neck, had slits for eyes and mouth, sharp protrusions from the nose and ears, which were described as carrot-shaped, I huh. kid you not, um, and had hands like lobster claws. Both of the legs were apparently fused together and, and, and terminated in, like, a elephant stump, so to speak, which is why they're called the Pascula Elephant Men. Okay. Um, and they moved in a robotic manner. So, this is a really wild sighting in terms of aliens, and I think one of the reasons why it's so popular is because it's so unlike other alien sightings, because it's, like, it doesn't fit any of the... The boilerplates, right? Yeah, it's a fits. really unique descriptor for, well, for that in general. Yeah, like, 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 and if you scroll down, there's a picture of it. Which yeah, it's not, it's not a great picture. Not a great. Wouldn't, picture. wouldn't say that's an artist rendering. That is an artist rendering for sure. Um, and we've got our two heroes of the story. I think uh, top is Hickson, the bottom is Parker. Who, so. who, the, the two of them couldn't look more bored in those photos. They really couldn't. No. They look absolutely bored with the everything that they're there for. They look they, like they're they're on uh like watching the monthly safety training videos. Yes. Yes. For me, for me that's like when business conduct guidelines comes around, you have to be like, "Oh, here are all the things that that people in the company are clearly doing that you don't say anything about because you don't want to shake the boat." Yeah. <laughs> Fair. And you don't want you, you, your 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 check that cashes at the every other week is the thing that matters more to you than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so after the appearance of these entities, both men reported being paralyzed and numb. Apparently, Parker fainted at this point in the story, so the majority of the reporting on the actual events within the craft comes from Hickson. When par while paralyzed, the men were seized by the creatures and floated into the craft. Hot. I mean, this is a this is pretty much the setup to like a lot of kinky things. Oh yeah, 
Like a lot of kinky things. Now I'm thinking of species. Oh, that, I, like, I like that movie. Well, uh, Teenage John liked that movie. I don't know if I've seen it recent. Species? Yeah. It, it was really sexy. In the sense of, like, 90s sexiness. Yeah, which was a very different kind of thing. Yeah, 90s sexy's weird now. Yeah. It's a little it's a little disconcerting, to be totally honest, sometimes. Um Yeah, I mean the the, the picture for species is literally like the the species the awakening is literally a woman in like a skin tight red dress. Really? Yes. And can confirm. Yes. Yeah, it's it's aggressively sexy. Um men can't resist her, man mankind might not survive her. Yeah. I kind of want to watch that movie now. Well, okay, sure. 95? Really? Huh. It's a very different alien movie, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's on the ship? Hickson claimed to have been levitated a few feet off the ground and examined by a football-shaped mechanical eye, which scanned his body. 20 minutes after being abducted, the men were returned to their fishing site, at which point they got in the car. Hickson, at least, drank some whiskey at this point. Uh, I can't blame him. I, I can't put any blame on him for that uh, at this point. That's fair. Assuming uh, that the previous story was true. Assuming the previous story was true. Uh, and then they drove to report their experience after sitting in the car for about 45 minutes by reports. Okay. So this is where the MUFON stuff starts to come into place because I literally couldn't find this other places. So um, after calming down, the men attempted to report their story to the Keesler Airport base, according to the MUFON report. However, Project Blue Book, which I have footnotes here. It's Alien Research plus U.S. Air Force equals Conspiracy Gold Mind. If you don't know what Project, Project Blue Book is, it's basically just like every alien person's wet dream when it comes to... The government's covering up everything. Yeah. Um, it ended four years before. So the Air Force suggested that they notify police. Um, as an aside, I kind of feel like at this point they were probably impaired. That's and probably a my, fair assumption. My That's main definitely reason, a fair assumption. My main reason for thinking that is because, like, the Air Force base turning them away was probably like, we just don't want to deal with you. Yeah. Like, I, that's all I think. That's all I can think of is, like, I just, I literally don't get paid enough to deal with people like you. That is literally, that is how I read that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, at 1030, the pair made it to the Jackson County, Mississippi Sheriff's Office. Apparently, in an effort to provide credibility to their story, they brought the catfish they caught while fishing. Um. Okay. I mean, it's the only proof that they have that the, of anything. I guess, but that's not the thing that it is that they're trying to prove. Every <laughs> well, listen. Sometimes people question whether or not you caught a fish that big, Brandon. And that was the most pressing thing on their mind. Do you think they were noodling? Not, or are they noodling? Were they noodling? I mean, if you're catching catfish, you're usually noodling, right? I hope they were can, noodling. I hope they showed up all like swampy, swampy can and you noodling. Catch Okay, here's a question. Yeah. Do people catch catfish without noodling? Because I actually don't know. I, th I think it's I just. Think... I I'd assume they possibly. Yep, they right? do. Do do do. They do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So noodling. The jury's still out on whether or not it was noodling, Brandon. I'm sorry. I hope it was. That's the narrative I'm going to construct in my head. That would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm just imagining the aliens coming down because they're like, the fuck are they doing? <laughs> what? What? What are they? Are they just sticking their arms in fish's mouths? That guy's got a fish on each arm. Yeah, and that's why they're like, oh, we got to get a look at these guys. We got to get a look at these guys. We got to figure something out. Yeah. I, I just. There's. <laughs> I to take them on board, figure this shit out. <laughs> Oh man, that would be such a great reality. Honestly, if aliens 
did abduct people, it would literally be for stuff like that. Like, oh yeah, it'd be all Southerners. It would be well. That's the reason why rednecks are so common. Or high schoolers. Yes. I mean, think about the demographics, Brandon. Yeah. With the exception of uh, Barney and B- Betty Hill, most of them are like rednecks True. or like college students, and I'm pretty sure are high school students. And I'm pretty sure that the Betty and Barney Hill thing uh, was a lot darker than just an alien abduction. But we we don't need yeah. to talk about that on this episode. I, I deliberately avoided picking that one because I didn't feel like talking about the implications of what I think actually happened. And this yeah. is a funny podcast, not a not a not an examination of the terrible things about America. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. The sheriff, Fred Diamond, reportedly thought that the men seemed sincere. However, he doubted the story after learning of Hickson's admitted whiskey consumption. Which, to be fair, uh, I would instantly doubt the story, too, if someone told me that they had been drinking whiskey. Yeah, it just smells like catfish and Jack Daniels he's trying to tell the police a story. Yeah, that's, 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 I'm not gonna lie, if you, if you are rocking the catfish-Jack Daniels combo... Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not going to believe you as much Yeah. if you come telling me stuff. Yeah, not something you're going to find at Avon. Uh, find at Avon? Yeah, like that scent. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Just a wild... I, I've never... I guess, yeah, Avon Avon is a thing. Yeah, it's his new uh, Old Spice Catfish and Whiskey. That's probably a scent that someone's worked on, Brandon. It's just the locker room. That's the something they're trying to cover up. Well, I'm I'm going to bet that there's a hipster who's trying to emulate that smell somewhere. Do hipsters Probably. exist still? I think. Like, is is that a construct that still exists? Because like it was a thing. I get called a hipster a lot. All right, so I guess it still exists. I don't think I am though. I might be. I don't know. I've given in. You. You might be. A, now. You might. You might be a hipster, but you're not a hipster because you're trying to be a hipster. It's just the way that you're, the things you like to do line up. I yeah. Feel like, like I, I think that's just like, it. I, like I don't trying. think it's like weird shit. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just pretty much what you are, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like it's not an it's not an affect. It's it's just you. Yeah. And hipster is just the best way to describe it, because <laughs> it's eclectic, <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. That uh, eclectic. That's what it is. Yeah, I like eclectic. that. Eclectic. Yeah. I like eclectic as a word. Yeah. Because that describes that describes so many of the people I know. Yeah. That's very true. Almost every person who I consider myself friends with is an eclectic person. Yeah. I don't think there's a single person who would be considered normal. That yeah. Besides, who wants to be friends with normal people? Normal sucks. Uh, So to test the men, Sheriff Diamond left the room with a hidden microphone, assuming they would reveal their scheme. I like the cut of that guy's jib. Yeah, it's pretty good. So surprisingly, I found a partial transcript of the tape and at least two versions of the recording. However, the recording itself is extremely low quality. And let me send it to you, Brandon. It's the 1970s. You can't expect like... A recording off a hidden microphone to be anything, anything worthwhile. Substance. Yeah, yeah. Here's a here's the YouTube video I found, and I like legitimately couldn't make out anything, so I didn't really report report on any of the things that were said in there, mainly because uh, I didn't feel confident that what was being written in the transcript was what I was hearing. Because it just sounds like mumbling to me. Yeah. Yeah. My, my assumption is that anything that would have shown up in the transcript is like whatever the audio version of Pareidolia is. Uh, but basically, basically the long and short of it, cops didn't hear them say anything like, like that they were lying or anything like that. But uh, so let me let me say what I actually wrote, because that's what I should do. Uh, according to NICAP, who transcribed it, and that's one of those UFO organizations. I don't remember what it stands for. Is Do that what? the one from the Skinwalker Ranch? It might be. Uh, the I National the... Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. Yeah, that's the one where it was the crazy millionaire, and really he just 
was like they made a bunch of stuff up so that he could try to make um his own rocket but then he turns out they were bad at it so he just bought parts from other companies and stuck them together yep 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 that one it's pretty much the same thing which is uh i think that's episode 21 we do have the list yes yeah. that is that is the episode um Ooh, okay, so although it does appear that the conversation... Uh, and then he opened was, up a bunch of hotel chains. Sorry to cut you off. That's yeah, he did. A, was it like Best shit. Western or something? Yeah. Or, yeah. No, no, it's it's like a budget hotel chain. Yeah. I don't remember which one it was. Yeah. Budget hotel chain. Like, Anywho. He made up Ny- NICAP to get property so he could make bad rockets, which failed, and then he opened up a hotel chain. There's that... There. <laughs> Skip episode 21. <laughs> yeah. Paranormal stuff is weird. Paranormal, like, the research, the people who research paranormal stuff tend to be a little bit eclectic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Skinwalker's part two. I- I'm pulling it up. I'm going to look up what the name of that chain was. I I, th- uh, I think that's what it was. Uh, control F, maybe. Uh, hotel. I found Hotbed. Uh, budget Suites. Ah, uh, yep, Budget Suites. Budget Suites. Okay, so about the, the transcript itself, I have it in the show notes. I have it in the episode description. I have it in the the copy, all that stuff. If you want to listen to it yourself, you can. Brandon, please, for the love of our, our listeners' ears, do not cut that in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that out. I, I literally had it on for like 15 minutes while I was writing this, and I couldn't yeah. make out a single word. Um, it vaguely sounds like the conversation's mostly being led by Hickson, and Parker was more or less panicking during the entirety of it, right? Yeah. So um, it really seems like like what I got out of that is Hickson was driving things more than Parker. Yeah. But, you know, who knows, right? He's the older gentleman... Parker's 18 or however old he is at this time, 18. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, it's literally as though uh, your dad's older friend is, is like talking you into something. Yeah. Kind of. That's kind of the vibe I get off of it. Um, whether or not he actually was talking him into anything or trying to calm him down or whatever, that's up to the listener. Um, because quite frankly, the audio quality is so bad. I can't even, pick out what's going on half the time. Um, but to me, this report recording is not proof one way or the other. Um, when you consider it had to have been more than one hour after the event. So assuming that it happened, what they're doing is not abnormal talking about what happened. Yeah. Assuming that it didn't happen. What they're doing is also not normal is also not absurd because they're talking about what happened and you know whatever um and frankly if you're perpetrating a hoax it's generally not common sense to out the hoax in the police station while you're reporting it yeah just just like i'm not going to say that this is a slam dunk one way or the other because literally i can see both sides of the story and i doubt that if they're hoaxers they're going to do that Mm -hmm. like i doubt it i just let me at least have this one piece of belief in humanity that if they're trying to hoax something (laughs) they wouldn't like literally uh like a bad children's tv show it where it's like yeah 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 Sorry, something was funny happening on the other side of the door. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, so, uh. somehow, news of this has gotten the news had gotten wind of the events the night prior, and yes. the police station had been swarmed by reporters in the morning. Always a good At, thing when that happens. Yep, yep. At this point, the story dissolves to he said, he said, and notice I said he said, he said because it's both men. Yes. Uh, as Hickson accuses Diamond of outing their story to the press. From my armchair researcher perspective, uh, it seems as though it might be possible that one of the ni- the witnesses might have outed it themselves as well. 
there's literally it's literally just as likely that Hickson told someone yeah. than the sheriff told someone. I, I it's all conjecture at this point. Yeah. Hmm? Oh nothing. Okay. Um regardless, the media found out and Hickson and Parker had a lawyer represent them. Oh, where's this going? The attorney took the men to get examined for radiation testing because Hickson expressed a fear that he had been poisoned by radiation. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, for some reason, because the hospital didn't have the technology to test for radiation poisoning, brought them back to Keesler Air Force Force Base, who suddenly showed an interest, examined the men, and did, like, interviews of him, of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, it should also be noted that Hickson at this point, at some point in this story here, he took a polygraph test. Yeah. But even and how if the he person, do? well, it, the person who was administering it was a novice, uh, and he succeeded the test. Okay. Well, but that means literally nothing because even if the person was an expert delivering a polygraph test, it would have it's just literally it's it's literally pseudoscience at yeah. like they're, they're not the evidence height, of anything it's the height of pseudoscience you can't even you cannot even it's inadmissible in court i'm pretty sure yeah a polygraph test it is they're the uh the the law version of um those thetan testers <laughs> mm-hmm. well it's literally it's i think it's literally just a thing to trick people who don't know that polygraph tests are nonsense into confessing. I think there was a long period of time when they thought that they were real. And I think for certain things you still, um, depending where your work, might have to undergo polygraph tests every once in a while. Yeah, if you have to undergo a polygraph test for your job, leave your job. Yeah, fair. I, I'm just saying, like, like that's, that's, that's some, like, late-stage capitalism stuff that I don't even want to deal with. Yeah. Um, but... Whatever. So he took the polygraph. He passed, but I'm not going to hold it up as any evidence one way or the other. Yeah. Um, James Harder and Alan Hynek, who are two prominent names in the UFO community. Uh, I think Alan Hynek was Project uh, Project Blue Book astronomer, if my memory is correct. Mm-hmm. Um, interviewed the men with Harder attempting his hypnosis. Oh, Ultimately, even better. Yeah. Ultimately, they came to no conclusions. However, Hynek did seem to believe that the men were at the very least honest and generally distressed. In fact, Parker had what's described as an emotional breakdown shortly after the events, although that might have been triggered by media attention. So, now, let's let's move the clock forward a little bit, about 20 years. Because after this point, uh, Parker and Hickson go into, they move... They go into hiding. They don't yeah. talk about it, except Hickson, who constantly goes and talks about it at like UFO conferences and stuff like that. Of course, so, he does. Yeah, Parker doesn't. To his credit, Parker doesn't until about twenty years later. <laughs> so, despite initially claiming to have been passed out for the events, Parker's story changed in the new telling of the story. Parker claims to have been laid on a sloped table in the craft. While on the table, he was examined by a petite, apparently female entity. Nice. 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 While paralyzed, he observed the entity injecting a needle into the base of the underside of his penis. Nice. Is it? Nice. (laughs) Is that nice? Now, Brandon, I want you to take a guess here. Uh Uh-huh. Why do you think that they uh, they they stuck a needle in this penis? Um, either it, well, it's one of two things. Either they're trying to collect samples for further, like make hybrids or production, whatever, or, or more likely, it's their thing. I think it's their thing too. I think it's their it does, thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into that in a second. Um, apparently. Parker felt he was immediate in immediate danger during the events and was telepathically to- told. He had been taken for an undisclosed reason. Now, I'm just going to say something right here. Clearly not his thing. Continue. Yeah. uh, If anyone sticks a needle 
into the underside of my penis, I'm going to feel as though I'm in imminent da- immediate danger. Because I am in danger. So what you're saying is it's also not your not my thing. thing. Okay. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. <laughs> okay. So at this point, the story then syncs up with Hickson, with him being returned to the riverbank. Mm-hmm. However, However, Parker's story doesn't end there. Go on. He claims yeah. to have encountered the craft again 19 years later, Brandon. Wait, 19 years after the 20 years? 19 years after the 1973. So this is... Gotcha. 92, I think. All right. I was one. I'll, we'll say 92. So, uh, this time, after seeing the ship, he voluntarily walks on and meets the same entity <gasps> as had shoved the little thing into the base of his maybe, penis. Maybe he thinks it's his thing now. Maybe he thinks it's his thing. So, Brandon, what do you think? What do you think happens when he's on this ship? He learns it is his thing, <gasps> and then it's because it's aliens. It's Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, this is gonna be the best slash fiction ever. Brandon, Brandon, <laughs> cut that title out. Cut that title out. We are going to write. We are going to ghost. We're going to write. An erotica novel called Fifty Shades of Grey's. It's gonna okay? be so good. And we're going to publish that on, on Amazon oh. and we'll make at least ten dollars. Yes. Because that is a hilarious title name. I don't care what's in that book. Yeah. Just Sherwin Williams paint samples. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so funny. <laughs> that would be really funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like sell it for a buck. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Um, so, when I heard this story the first time, when I was reading this story, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, the, they took they took sperm out of his penis, and they made a hybrid, and that's why he's seeing the same entity. Yeah. Yeah, that's not what happened at all, Brandon. No. No, no. Uh, so, apparently, the two had a conversation in English, spoken English, about religion. I thought you were going to say consent, but continue. No, consent is not on their mind. They have no concept of consent, clearly. They're Pastafarian. Is that a Pastafarian tenant? No. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's like a, that's just like a a mockery of just religion as a general concept. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, she informed him that they shared the same God, and that the Bible was an authentic text. And that her species mm. wanted to live on Earth, but could not due to humanity's tendencies towards war and destruction. Okay. So it was a pretty normal UFO sighting. Yeah. Th- 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 yeah. I mean, it's normal. It's, that, it's, that part's pretty vanilla. Yeah. Nothing, nothing really jumps out at me as particularly strange about it, to be totally honest with you. I, I mean, it's, it's your standard UFO story. Religion's real. God's real. We ser- we we worship the same God, despite it not being in your cosmology. Um, mm-hmm. Humans are assholes. Yeah, pretty Stock. much. I mean, at the very least, there is one true statement in that somewhere yeah. in there, and that that true statement at the very least is humans are assholes. Yeah. Um. I know a few of them. I know a lot of them, myself included. Uh. So, at the time of the incident. There were UFO sightings in the area, and there were UFO sightings even on the night of their abduction. However, there were no other reports of that particular UFO, despite near a, being near a heavily trafficked highway. Um, and there wouldn't be until 46 years later. Oh, no. Before getting into this, I want to preface this by saying that the sighting was reported by The Sun. Okay. So, a tabloid. (laughs) Um, So, in 2019, Maria and Vernon Jerry Blair. I really want to know how his nickname became Jerry from Vernon. I don't know. Because, like, I can see, like, sometimes I can see the, the trajectory of nicknames, but I literally can't see the trajectory on Jerry. 
Yeah, that's weird. From Vernon. That's a weird like, one. Right? That's like, weirder than getting Jack from John. Yeah. It's the same number of syllables. Yeah. I don't I don't ever understood that. Why Jack? Yeah. Like I like just call them Jack. Name them Jack. That's a name. Yeah. Anywho, they were apparently on the direct opposite bank of the Pascagoula River. Pascagoula River. Uh, from Parker and Hickson. While sitting in their car, they saw strange lights over the river. I thought it was an aeroplane because of the bright lights flashing, and it just kept going back and forth across the sky. I told my husband, there's something wrong with that plane. It's like he doesn't know where he wants to go. So apparently, the couple watched the lights for 40 minutes. Uh, okay. That's a long time to watch lights. I'm not going to yuck their yum, but I would not sit and watch no. a plain, what I thought was plain lights for 40 minutes. And it's 2019. Like, uh, No, this is... This is this is this is 1973. Oh, so they this wouldn't have been about, able to pull out their smartphones and just like no. watch YouTube. This is about this is about a sighting that happened 46 years ago, Brandon. If I didn't make that clear, let me reiterate. This is them talking about something they saw 46 yeah. years ago. Yeah, that's too long. Brandon, too I don't time. remember what happened 2 years ago. But whatever. Yeah. So I mean, that's because the on account of the accident. That's on account of the accident. Yeah. yeah, I don't even remember what the accident was, but it was an accident. There's. I'm just saying that pasta sauce. Those stems will never come out. No, it was quite a noodle incident. Oh, talking about pasta sauce. Okay, there was a chili cook-off at work. This is a little bit of a tangent. There's a chili cook-off competition at work. Brandon, Brandon, if if talking about pasta sauce is the lead into a story. It is guaranteed to be a tangent, unless you are a chef. <laughs> yeah. So the, 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 there was a chili cook-off at work, and um, mm. I had a meeting right after it. Didn't go. Already had meat once that day. Wasn't going to have more. Anyway, I noticed in the middle of this meeting that someone had chili on the back of their shirt. And the rest of the meeting was just me staring at the back of this person's shirt, trying to figure out how it got there. How? I don't know, I didn't ask, and I didn't tell them, because I just wanted that to stay there. Yeah, that's fair. It makes the world a better place. Yeah. But, like, how? I don't... I don't know. I'm just... I, I, well, that being said, like, I've had weird stuff happen to me. Like, I'd have, I've had syrup show up on my fingers when I was eating something and been like, how did that end up on my finger? I literally have been using a fork this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> if, you were, if you're like, I didn't have syrup today. Yeah. It, it's weird. It's very yeah. weird. Um, but at the very least, at the very least, there was a chili cook-off. So yes, there was. It's not like it's not like they just picked up chili from the sky. It wasn't chili condensate. No, that sounds far more interesting, though. Chili condensate? Oh, man. Imagine if it was chili rain, like burger rain, only different. That would be preferable. Would it? Yeah. Easier to clean up, I think. You could hose that shit off. Oh, it would be It would be preferable to burger rain, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But then you have Crash McLarson. Yeah. But he's the, he's the cause of the burger rain. Oh, so. also, there are some very heated arguments at work, and I need to know your um, opinion on this. Chili, okay. mm -hmm. should it or should it not contain beans? There is a correct answer. It should contain beans. All right, good answer. Why would you not have beans in chili? There was... It wasn't yelling, but there was elevated voices who, at work. <laughs> who is the monster who doesn't put beans in their chili? Kidney beans are like, like the best part of Stewart's yeah. chili. Yeah, listen, my chili has three different kinds of beans in it. That... Tim and Gumby or the two fucking outliers. And then there was another person. I don't know. It was a whole thing. But they're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. It, it adds it adds a body to the, the chili. Yeah. And not only that, but the beans can, like, absorb that flavoring. Yeah. And then it's just like, you got chili beans oh, now. Oh, and fucking Sheila doesn't put uh, goddamn uh, uh, beans in her chili. And then, you know, what? I, I, the whole department was we were in a meeting and the people were talking about it. And then I told... It, I told her, 
from across the room. A lack of beans is a lack of love, and therefore her chili was made without love. <laughs> you can't spell love without beans. No, that's correct. You can't. Anywho, so apparently, I'm going to assume that the couple was talking about chili beans the whole time. Yes. Because that's the only reason why a 40-minute long conversation watching airplane lights could happen. Um, after 40 minutes, they got out of the car, and Maria walked down towards a nearby pier towards a boat. We started walking down the pier, and something came up out of the water. It was like a person. I told Jerry, there's somebody out there. They came up out of the water and then went back down. So I'm standing there, waiting for this person, and the water rippled out. I walked down to the boat, and it was about 1130 to 12 p.m. before I came back down the pier. I was by myself. I ran back to the car. So here's the first thing that I want to point out. Uh, They reported to the police at 1030. So if we just do the basic math here, at no point were they overlapping with... uh, Hickson and Parker's... The original report. Yes. Yeah. At no point was their story overlapping. Just just want to point that out, first of all, before we get into this next bit. So, Maria didn't report her encounter at the request of Jerry to avoid looking crazy. Literally what they said. Supposedly, she had been looking for the abductees, but they had been hiding from meeting attention. That being said, both had conducted interviews... As I mentioned, the 20-year anniversary interview where Parker talked about uh, getting sucked dry, I want to say. Uh-huh. Um, nice. And Hickson was explicitly outspoken about the events prior to his death in 2011. Yeah. Parker met with Maria and reportedly believed her. However, he had literally just released a book on the topic. So, who knows? Uh, I just want to say, I don't think that they saw the same thing, if they saw the same thing, because nothing in her story matches with anything in the story whatsoever. And not only that, but, like, it's not like they were witnesses to the event, because the timing doesn't match up. Yeah, I highly doubt all of those... Just everything. I, I, all of the that things. Was, that was a common story I found. And, like, apparently now there's, like, a marker at the location of the abduction and all that stuff. Which is probably just the town being, like, something weird. Something we're popular for happened here. We might as well put a marker down so it has some kind of tourist draw to that part of town that no one likes to go to. Yeah. Because it's an abandoned shipyard. <laughs> it's like the, that's the best kind. That's the only kind that I've ever encountered. Because all the shipyards in Kingston are abandoned. There's got to be... Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's docks, but the shipyards are abandoned. Well, even uh, some of them are just restaurants now on the waterfront. Yeah, it's just, just restaurants. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of restaurants in, in Kingston now. Yeah. That place is getting gentrified. Yeah. I think... Well, actually, is it technically being gentrified or is it gentrified? Because uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the barrier is for becoming gentrified and being actually gentrified. I feel like it's like a subtle barrier. Yeah, like it just happens. Where one day it's like, oh, avocados is everywhere. It's uh, I'm gonna say it's not yet, only because Snapper McGee's is still in business. <laughs> like that's the dive bar. That's Fair enough. Like, that's once, like the shady the, spot in Uptown. Yeah. Like, once, once, what, once the dive bar goes away, then it will be gentrified. Yeah, that that's going to be the the keystone, I think. That's the uh, that's the linchpin. Yeah. <laughs> so, a famed UFO skeptic, Philip J. Class, believes the events to be a hoax. There were discrepancies in Hicken's stories. The slit mouth was originally a hole. And Hickson also refused to take a second polygraph test 
administered by a more experienced police examiner. Which, as I said before, uh, polygraph test is not evidence of anything. But if somebody believes in the polygraph test and they refuse to take a second one, that usually means they're not up to snuff, in my opinion. Yeah. Just like psychologically speaking, that's like a that's a red flag. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not a smoking gun, but it's a hmm. I'm starting to doubt your story. Yeah. Um. It, it apparently. Hickson was not the most reputable character because he had been fired for improperly taking money from his employees under his supervision. (laughs) And I want to just point out that, like, this story could conceivably be changed to Hickson bullied his younger employee into believing, into, like, saying a story his younger employee, the younger employee, told a lie so much it became incorporated into his personality and decided to make money off of it at, later in life. Like that wouldn't be an impossible story to write. Like it's not a huge leap of logic. Um, for all I know, it could be an intimidation thing, but who knows? Yeah. Um, there was another theory posited by Joe Nickel. Yes, who's Joe our crypto- He's our uh, he's our Cryptopedia alumni. Uh, even though he's never appeared on the show, but he, we talk about him a lot. He proposed a solution outside of a hoax, or it actually happening. Uh, the men dozed off, and Hickson was in a uh, hypnagonic state, so basically sleep paralysis. Yeah. Uh, considering the fact that Hickson's report is really not too different from historical stories of sleep paralysis, uh, this actually might be a fairly re- reasonable option. Uh because like he's seeing things, he's seeing lights, he's seeing figures per- paralyzed, can't move, things are happening to him, and then he comes to at a later time after everything was done. Like it's like the old woman stories, the the succubus stories. It's it's like a all lot, of the story, like a like, lot of different like ones. A lot. Hi- hypnagogia is the uh, more plausible than. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of things that, that could fall on Occam's razor on this one. Yeah, I, I think hypnagogia... Actually, I like the hypnagogia theory, and my rationale for the hypnagogia theory is um, they both fell asleep because fishing is boring. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's literally a sport characterized by how relaxing it is. Yeah, it's you can drink on a boat. Yeah. You can drink. Apparently, Parker didn't drink, but whatever. That's um, f- <laughs> fishing is nothing but an excuse for day drinking. <laughs> like, well, this in this case, it's night drinking. Oh yeah, because they're done with work. Yeah, but yes, t- fishing fishing for adults is nothing but an excuse for uh, day drinking or your job. Yeah, there's no in between. It's either literally your job or your day drinking. Mm-hmm. Um. Given that Hickson was far older than Parker, intimidation might actually explain Parker's reaction to everything. Mm -hmm. Because have you ever woken up from a nap and someone been like, this thing just happened, man. And your brain, your, your brain synapses aren't firing great enough. So you're just like, that fucking happened. That definitely happened. Oh my God, it happened. And then you've rewritten your memories. No, that's never happened to me. Oh. I can I can see that happening. I can see that happening. I I don't know if that's actually happened to me. It might have happened. I don't, I don't know. know. My my dream state, me waking up, John, is really impressionable. Is all I'm going to say. Maybe. Really impressionable. Like I don't know. I I, I but. Uh, classic. It's happening. (laughs) I can see the plugs line on it, um, and it's hitting me. So, ultimately, however, I don't have an answer to this case. It's really unsatisfying. Uh, I don't think they were abducted, but I'm not really sure how premeditated their story was. And I can't really say one way or the other how I feel. Yeah. You know, it's one of those situations where it's like... I just noticed you have a GoPro hanging off the bottom of your microphone. No, no, it's not a GoPro. This is a uh, this is a 
I hang my recorder device on it whenever I record uh, toy office. I just saw the octopus so and assumed. Yeah, so I can keep an eye on the fact that it, whether or not it's recording. Yeah. Um, because I've had multiple cases where it stops recording in the middle of me recording the episode. I actually just recently had that happen. Oh, fuck. Uh, and I lost like 10 minutes of audio. So I haven't released a new episode of, Crypto- of, of Toy Office in a month because things keep happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> anywho. Uh, that's all I got on this story. Um, I'm sure there's more to it, and I'm sure there's other stuff that people talk about in regards to it because... Maybe. I, alien stories are one of those things... Aliens and the JFK assassination are very similar in that there's not a lot of hay to make out of the stories outside of what, like, you know, a few things. Yeah. Uh, but as a but result... a few things, there are people fucking latch onto them. Yes. Yes. That is very much the case in this story. Um, I didn't find anything particularly interesting outside of what I've told you. Mm-hmm. But somebody who's more familiar with alien abduction stories... Oh, Kevin. you're on number two. <coughs> I'm going to fall asleep immediately after this. That's what's going to happen. I just woke up from a nap, but it's happening again. Don't have much to say. Uh, regardless, it's it's a fairly standard alien abduction story. The only thing that's really special about it is the uh, aliens are kind of unique. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of remind me of like clay men, so to speak. Like clay robots. Uh, that's the way I envision them. Like, yeah. Because they've got like that coil shape they have the, that, like, like those wrinkles and it kind of reminds me of like if someone coiled up clay and then like made a coil pot out of yeah it. always think of that one batman villain Clayface. yeah but if his legs are stuck together i mean hi- hypothetically his legs could be stuck together it's not yeah. really hard if batman just hits him with like a like a batarang bolus or something yeah i mean he's probably done it there's a lot of batman comics there's, there are a lot of Batman comics. There are a lot of... Uh, that's a controversial opinion, I know. Is it an opinion, though? I don't no. Think so. Uh, so, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, good on you. Uh, we have a website, CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us with ideas or stories or anything, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, and for the first time in a year, we have a new jackalope. Oh, you don't got to say it like that. I am going to say it like that, because it's a it's an event. Yeah. It's auspicious. Yeah, I did add to the list, by the way, while you are talking before. You did. You did. Yeah, I, I updated it. I, I No, I know. I just, okay. I'm, I, I got to get, like, I don't have a clacker, so I can't do, like, a thing, you know, like a party favor noise oh one of those so you're just typing fast because you don't have yeah um yeah. so we've got three jackalopes now we've got clay sinclair marty von party and our and latest is that is that really his name yeah at least from the uh you can double check it that's from the screenshot that you sent me is it really Let's yeah see. i believe so i believe so We'll, let, me we'll, see if they, uh, let me see if his name is the same. We'll yeah, it is. Okay. Suspense. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, and Bird Schneider. Yes. Welcome to the Jackalope family. Uh, With the hollowest of bones. Yes. The hollowest of bones. Um, yes. I should also note, I added an improvement to our our Patreon. Ah. Where if you become... So if you become a patron, you get automatically invited. You like can get an automatic invite to our discord channel now because i figured out how to set up automatic invites on discord oh nice for it. and you automatically will get a label matching whatever patron level you are oh um, they can just automate that yes so i figured out how to do that one day and i did it <laughs> that's all there is to it we have that now because i didn't feel like going through a whole rigmarole for getting uh new patrons into the the yeah. discord as time goes on I mean, the Discord also exists. I, I don't think you need to necessarily have a patron yeah. level, but you can join the Discord at any time. It's got a really long name. There's a link somewhere, somewhere. You can find it. Or you can just, you know, at me on Twitter, and I'll I'll send you an invite. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send those in. Preferably ones that are small. Like, okay, so we currently have a request for Wendigo that is currently in progress, Clay and Marty. <laughs> uh so we're working on that one but if you have any like more obscure cryptids that would be appreciated too because from brandon and i's experience uh the less obscure cryptids are the harder they are to write an episode about yeah it's sort of <laughs> like, counterintuitive but yeah that's yeah, how, how like, they uh roll well mothman required me to read a full book <laughs> so there's one where i'm there, i the the not the one coming up but the one after that i think i'm afraid i might have to read a book on it you might have to read a book brandon i've for this podcast i think i've read at least 10 books at this point and and, and I'm, i haven't read it yet because i'm deciding if i should be a bad person because i could get the real book mm-hmm. but that's paperback I could get it on Kindle because somebody did basically copy and paste the entire book into Kindle and they're selling it on Amazon for like a dollar. And then it's also on Kindle. I just do Kindle. Yeah. All of my all of my books, if I can find a Kindle version of a book, I do because I can then like well, it's do not, highlights. It's not the real book. Somebody basically pirated the book and is selling it on Kindle for a dollar. Hmm. That seems illegal. Oh, yeah. All the comments on Amazon say that, too. <laughs> huh. I actually just... So I was watching The Lockpicking Lawyer the other day. Yeah. And apparently there's a lockbox that has a little thing in it that says, leave five-star review and get a $10 Amazon rebate. Oh, really? Which is super-duper against Amazon's terms of service. Yeah. And if you mention it, your if you mention the card, your rebate is void. So, oh. of course, what did the lockpicking lawyer do? The guy who's, like, literally the main person who's reviewing locks right now? Yeah. He's like, hey, these guys are assholes. <laughs> it's fair. And then he, proceed- then he proceeded to pick the lock in, like, five seconds. And been like, it's not even a good lock. Yeah. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, all right, you can follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediatocast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Oh, my Instagram is sleep at sleep.com. No, it's uh, at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And our art was done by Thomas Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I was just thinking about our art and I'm like, man, it feels like an eternity ago that we got Tom to draw that. Yeah. Not that right? long ago. Two years. It's getting it's getting to two years. It's a yeah, year and a half. That's true. Anywho, uh, I'm we, John. We don't need to be revived. We don't get like different haircuts or anything. We'll make a we'll make Cryptopedia season two series two. Oh um, yeah! It'll be it'll be like uh it'll be like Sonic Underground where everyone's got like different looks. Oh ah, oh, I totally forgot to make a bit about Sonic. Brandon, mm-hmm. your birthday was the same weekend as Sonic coming out. It was. Oh, and it my was. Nephew saw it and he was like, it was so good. Your nephew saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, I still want to see it. Apparently, it is okay. He wrecks a car at some point. I, I mean, it's Sonic. He's going to wreck a car. Yeah. Have you ever played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle? No. Really? No. Listen, between the two of us, one of us has the uh, Sonic reference. Fair. On a lot of our things, and the other one does not. To be okay, so the whole reason that my name has the Sonic reference is literally because I came up with it uh, on Christmas Day when I got my Xbox Live account. I just haven't. It's just it's easier to just have my name be the same everywhere. That's fair. It's really all it is. It's literally just easier to have my name be the same in all the places I play video games. Yeah, 
There's no no other reason for that. I don't particularly have an attachment to that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even play Sonic games anymore, really. No. Because they're kind of... A lot of them are bad. Sonic Mania was okay, though. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's a reason-ish game. It's a good thing that we started talking about this at the end of the episode and not at the yeah. beginning. Because cause this, is, this is the kind of talk that, like literally causes people to turn off a podcast oh yeah it's how we hemorrhage listeners <laughs> yes this is this is the death of listeners if you're yeah. still listening at this point i think we're not gonna lose you talking about sonic the hedgehog no i don't think so at least i was actually thinking about there was a hot second that i was going to do an episode about sonic the hedgehog for this week uh you should, and just never tell me what it is until the very end Yes, there was a hot second I was going to do a Sonic the Hedgehog episode. That's I might, fine. I might still do a Sonic the Hedgehog episode as wait like till a April. bonus. Wait, just make something up and wait till April. God. Uh, who's doing the April? What is, when is April, April 1st this year? April uh, 1st. The 1st. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what day of the week? It's uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's not a great day for this podcast. No. Hmm. Is that even the is that even a week we release on? Let's see, twenty fourth, ninth, twenty third. It is not even a week we release on. Okay. So unfortunate. Uh anywho. I'm John. I'm Brandon. Things are so far past weird that we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog now and his weird teeth. I wish they kept the original model. <laughs>